Hello and welcome to Pop Cult's Thing of the Week video podcast. It's uh, my name is Dan, and I am Tiara, and uh, we are here to talk about a different uh, thing in the pop culture landscape every week that uh, everyone is talking about and/or should be talking about. Yes. So uh, we were uh, discussing what we should do for the first one, and it's the finale was maybe two weeks ago now. But we are still talking about it because we just watched the entire series in one weekend on demand. Um, and that is Orphan Black, which kind of came out of nowhere for me and became super amazing. Yeah, Orphan Black is a BBC America original series, which is kind of weird because it's like an American show, but on the BBC. But uh, it's so instead of having like 23 episodes, there were only what? Were there 10? 10. 10 the episodes? First in the first season. And uh, basically, it's about this woman who is kind of like a chav. <laughs> and uh, she is at a train station, and I guess they're in Canada somewhere? It, it was, it, they were sort of vaguely implied they were in America, but all of the shots of where they actually were were of Toronto. So yeah. it was never really explained. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, so she's um, at a train station or a subway station, and she watches a or she runs into a woman that looks just like her, who happens to step in front of a train and kill herself, and that's like the opening part of the uh, series. Yeah, and of course, being kind of a con artist, she decides to take over that woman's life, and kind of things spiral out of control from there. But really, it's a series where, um, I mean, not without getting too spoilery, I think the main actress plays at least seven different roles in the yeah. series. Uh, her name is Tatiana Maslany, I believe is how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I had never seen her before, but she does an amazing job because she's playing all these different characters. Yeah, she does a really good job, and she's doing not just different characters, but different accents. Like, she's got her kind of sort of Cockney accent that's like the default that's Sarah, the uh, character who is the main uh, character of the story. And then she meets all of these different people that, uh, you know, she's playing, the actress is playing, and um, she, the woman who killed herself is American and has an, like an American accent. And there's another, you know, person that she meets that has an American accent that's actually very different. And the way that she portrays them is totally different. Like, when she's pretending to be American, it's kind of has this, like, I am a British person pretending to be American accent. Whereas if she, she's playing the actual American person, it has that kind of American accent to it. It's completely yeah. different. And she does, like, a Russian accent and... Uh, other things. I think too. what really impressed me is there's scenes in there where she's switching back and forth between one person pretending to be another person and then one person pretending to be another person and it's never and they're all wearing the same clothes but it's never confusing even though you'd think it would be and that's all in how she portrays the different characters I think. So uh, I think maybe you know, Sarah Michelle Gellar had been replaced by this actress in that one show where Sarah Michelle Gellar was herself and her twin. That show would have been more successful. It would have been more successful, <laughs> but I, I think what really sort of drives this show is that it is science fiction. Mm -hmm. It is, it keeps coming up with crazier and crazier plot twists. Yeah, it, ne it never, like, you think, you, th you start to think, okay, I know where this is going, and then it just, like, veers completely in a different direction, and you're just like, what the heck is going on? Right, right. No, it, it's a, um, it's extremely plot-driven, and stuff is always happening. I came into the season finale thinking, what could they possibly do for a season finale? Because half the episodes have felt like season finales in terms of the amount of things happening to them. Right. In them. So, so it's, uh... A lot more so than most shows, it's constantly having the next shoe drop. It's not leaving, having characters do stupid things to just drive the plot, right. you know, in one place. It's, uh, it, it really does a great job of keeping all these balls moving in the air, and that works really well. So I think maybe this kind of shows why uh, British television is so successful. Even though this is a BBC America um, original series... 
it's only 10 episodes yeah. and so you do get that kind of the plot like never slows down for a minute and it just kind of com continues going and it gets better and better and better as you go and it just kind of like snowballs until yeah. you hit the the season finale and you're like wait that can't be the last episode because i need to know more right now right and thankfully yeah. it has apparently been renewed for a second season because i guess it's been successful for right. them but the because it's had such great word of mouth but it, it's been uh I, it does feel like a British series. It does. You know, even though really, like, only the main character and her brother, I think, are British in the yeah. whole series. But um, it really does feel like a, uh, a series that would have been produced by the BBC set in England. It just happens to be set in North America. Right. Somewhere. Yeah, and it's just, it's really well done, and it does have that, yeah, it does have that BBC feel. And like I said, there's, you, there's only ten episodes, so you don't get kind of, like, those middle five or six episodes that you do when you have a 23 episode series, you know, series or season. And, you know, there's nothing in there that's like really like, oh, I could skip this episode. Right. It wouldn't matter because every little thing makes a huge difference. And like, I actually, I would really like to go back, I think, and watch the series again and yeah. see, because I bet you, I can only imagine there are things that we missed when we watched it because we kind of, came in, uh, started, we started watching, like, we watched the first episode, yeah. and we didn't watch it for several weeks, because we were busy, I guess, but when... <laughs> it, it gets better as it goes on. Yeah. Like after the first episode, I was like, oh, that's pretty good, I'll probably watch the second episode sometime. Mm -hmm. After the second episode, it was like, I want, I'll watch the next episode tomorrow, I guess, and then after, like, three, four episodes, it was, I need the next one immediately. <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> So we've been watching it on demand because we don't actually have uh, BBC America, sadly, on our cable package, but we can watch it on demand. And so um, we had to wait for the the season finale to come out a couple of days, but like when we got to that point where it was out, like it was the night before, or like with the night before that we were able to watch it, it was like, you know, it was our bedtime. And I'm like, well, we're on episode nine, but now it's bedtime, so now we'll have to wait till tomorrow, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> We're very sad. <laughs> but really, I think that this is one of the most interesting shows that's on television right now. It's not really, I don't think there are really any other shows out there that are kind of doing the same things that Orphan Black is doing. Yeah, it's sort of got, I mean, it has all of the parts of a show, all these different shows kind of smooshed together. It's got everything, it's got the... So it's part of it's like a cop show, part of it is sort of a thriller, it has very sort of horror mm -hmm. stuff in it of different kinds, you know, and it uh, has sort of science fiction element also, right. and romance and everything else, Yeah. but um, really it's really unique in terms of most shows you see on TV obviously sort of fit into some sort of box even like hbo shows are like it's a male anti-hero or right. whatever <laughs> but um it's it really i feel like i haven't seen this show before mm -hmm. which is really i think also something where i just had no idea what was going to happen from scene to scene yeah so it was it was that I, I enjoyed that aspect of it as well yeah it was definitely yeah very you didn't know where it was going or what was going to happen and um we actually watched the Red Wedding episode of Game of Thrones and then we watched like, what was it, the, like, I don't know if it was the penultimate episode or maybe episode 8 of Orphan Black and that was more of a shock for Dan than uh, the Game of Thrones episode was. <laughs> yeah, I think, it was, I think it was episode 8. Yeah. I, yeah, I was, uh, I, I went like, yeah. at the end of it. He literally <laughs> did that, no, like sitting right here next to me, this is where we watched TV from and he was like, so surprised, yeah, and so it um, definitely, you know, takes you for a wild ride, and, you know, not like any other kind of science fiction show that I've seen lately. It's very unique, uh, very well done, uh, well produced. Uh, the, the main actress who plays all of the girls, like at least seven different ones, uh, she's, you know, she's really, really good, and she's really really it makes it really believable like you can really believe that it's actually like seven different people instead of 
just uh, one person playing seven people. So that, I think, really definitely helps. And yeah, I would highly recommend this show to watch if you haven't seen it yet. Definitely. And I, I wonder how long, it, there's several scenes with her as like several different people in the same scene. I wonder how long it took them to shoot those. Right. Each one. And you yeah. see her like reacting in the background. I'm like, they had to shoot just her reacting in the background. Right. This scene also. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's um, it's really great and unique, and I definitely highly recommend it. Also, it's on uh, BBC America, or BBC America on Demand, or whatever uh, other channel you're able to get it through in the future. We we definitely recommend Orphan catching up on Orphan Black. So Orphan Black is our thing of the week, and uh, we'll see you next week when we talk about a different thing. Who knows what it'll be? Because we have no idea. But until then, uh, I'm Tiara. And I'm Dan. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.